Hi, in this video we want to continue on. We did binomial probabilities in the previous video, so if you haven't seen that, look at that one. Now we want to do a binomial probability distribution. So that just tells me what all the probabilities of all the outcomes can be. So we're going to put that into a chart. So if we look at the example from last time, we had a spinner and we set up this probability model. And so we did four, choose three, because we wanted three successes out of four trials. But I want to know what's the success if I have zero uh, successes out of four, one success out of four, two success out of four, and so on, all the way up to four. So that's how we get this binomial probability distribution. Now, if you look at my last answer, what happened was that I did four, choose three, because I wanted three successes. This number right here will go right here because I'm doing three successes out of four trials. The number here would be zero successes out of four trials. One success, two success, and, and four successes. So we want to calculate all those. So we're going to do four, choose zero, put it here, one-third to the zero, two-thirds to the fourth power. So if we do that, you can type that into your calculator and figure that one out. But what we're going to end up with then is that number right there. And I'm going to continue on with these. Okay, so that's what we're going to end up with. I want you to go to your calculator and make sure you can try some of these. So if I do this on the Inspire, these are the values that I'm getting. So what you can do is you can just uh, copy this one, just highlight it, and then hit Enter. And that will bring it back. And so if I want to change these things, make sure you change every item that you should. This would be two successes. Though I'm spinning green twice, that means that I'll spin not green twice. And then I can enter that. That would be the exact value, which would be the fraction. If I want the approximate value, I can go Control Enter, and then that would give me that value there. So I continue on with this. Now, us having four items, it isn't too bad to type this all in. But what if you had 10 items? That would really be a pain. So I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. But let's go talk about what the distribution means first. So over the course of these different times, where do we have the most occurrences? Well, if we wanted to spin green most often, how many times out of four would we get? Would it be on the low side of four or the high side of four? Well, if we look at four out of four, how many times are we going to get all green four out of four? Yeah, it's, it's pretty unlikely. However, to get it one or two times, yeah, that would be very likely because you get a one-third chance out of four to get that green. So then the probability stacks up quite a bit here. All right? So, sorry, I diverged there a little bit. But now if I want to answer this question, what is the probability of spinning at least one green and four spins? We really want to look at that thing right there. Well, at least one would be this probability plus this probability plus this probability plus this probability. All four of those. So if I do that, that would be P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4. However, what you might want to do is take your calculator and add these numbers up. And if you do add all those up, what are you going to equal? Well, it is the full sample space, so we should equal 1. So what I can do is I can either add up all these four values, or I can just take 1 minus this value right here. 1 minus this value will be the sum of all these values right here. So if I do that, either way, add all these up or else just 1 minus this one right here, I'm going to get 0 0.8024. And so that would be the probability of spinning at least one green, that includes one green, in four tries. Now you need to know this, and the distribution is really nice when you write it out, because you can get parts of the distribution and answer the questions that they're, they want. So if they're not asking for exactly, then the distribution works out really nicely to do that for you. So let me, see, let me show you how to get this binomial distribution into your calculator. There's a few ways, but this is one way. What you can do is you can put in the NCR, function and that would be under the menu if you wanted to under probability that would be combinations and you, you want to do four comma now I want this number 
the number of successes to change. And we defined it earlier as x, and so we'll define it again as x. Then your probability of success, that would be 1 divided by 3. And then we want that raised to, well, it, how many successes you got? I want that number right there. So this is very much like the formula. And then this one would be 2 divided by 3. And you're going to raise that. Well, this is the tricky part a little bit. What happens is that this number here and this number here have to add to 4. So if I have x here, the total being 4, I'm just taking away from 4. Oh, it's not that tricky. Okay, you got it. So it's just 4 minus x. So if this is a 1, this would be a 3. Makes sense. Now, if you hit enter on that, nothing shows up. However, the table of values is what you really want here. So you can go control T. Uh, I did this wrong, sorry. Menu, table. And so if I do the table, I want the split screen table. And if you notice, there are my values. Don't forget to include zero. I had to slide down to get that one. These are all the values that I put into the table. Now, they were nice fractions someplace there too over 81. However, you can use these decimal representations too. Now, a nice other representation for this is that when you get to statistics, you can take this and you can do a distribution or else this is just a dot plot. But this is shows how the probabilities stack up. Where is the probability the highest? Well, one out of four would be the highest. Two out of four would be the next. Zero out of four would be the next. 3 out of 4 is pretty unlikely, about 10%. And then 4 out of 4 of the green spins is very unlikely, 1.2% of the time. Are you going to get 4 out of 4 on the green? I hope that this kind of makes sense. It's nice to get a visual of these numbers. Otherwise, you can just look at the chart and go with that. Yeah, my two biggest numbers are right there. So that's what we're doing. All right, I'm going to use this same example when we get into expected value. So that would be my next video. But in this pro binomial probability distribution, I showed you how to write out the distribution. I showed you how to use the calculator. And hopefully you can figure out how to use this formula. And you use it, in this case, five times in order to figure out those different values. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And we got the next one coming.